Hello everyone, I was scrolling through Twitter the other day and I stumbled upon this great artist called Mehdi, so he is the author of this piece. Um, he also made a tutorial on how, how to create this in Cinema 4D and we, we will try to recreate it in Blender with a little animation as well. I will put in the description a link to his tutorial as well as his Instagram and Twitter maybe. So we will also use the same model he used, which is a shoe model you can find on uh, Sketchfab, it's free. So once you download it, uh, the way you import it into your scene is by going to File, Import, and then FP, and import your model. Okay, it's a little big, we can scale it down a little bit. All right, we'll move it along the X axis, rotate it. I'll hit double R, oh, hold on, uh, let me turn on uh, key screencast so you can see my keystrokes. Yes, here it is. Okay. First of all, as seen in the tutorial uh, made by Mehdi, you can actually uh, change the color of the... Sh oh yes, uh, we have to import the materials as well, by the way. <laughs> so, you click on new to add a new material. I assume you have the node wrangle or add-on enabled. Uh, once you do that, you you click on the principal BSDF and then you press Control shift t now you go to uh, you go to where you you downloaded the sketchfab model and then in textures you press a to select all and then press ok now you have the model with the materials there is an ambient occlusion node but it, we're not going to use it so we can just delete it and uh, yeah the rest is fine so you can actually choose to change the color of your uh, of some parts of your shoe. I'll show. I'll, uh, I use this one exactly uh, how it's imported, but it, yeah, you can change the color if you want. Let's say you want to change the bottom part of the shoe. You go uh, into edit mode, face mode, and then you sell, you pr uh, you put your cursor on a certain face of uh, the bottom part, and then you press L for linked. So now it's going to select this part, and now we can select this part as well. And then maybe this one, right? Now you go to, to Materials, press the plus for New Material. You click to assign a new material, and then you press Assign. Now uh, this part of the shoe has a new material, and you can change the color, for instance, make it red. Yeah, it looks ugly, but I, yeah, that's how you can change the colors of certain parts. For instance, you want to change this one, cursor on top, of the face and then L. We'll select this and then you can assign this same material. Okay, we will go back. Okay, so let's see how we can create the, the rotation, the array, radial array it's called. So once we have our shoe here, we can um, we can make the rotation a little more interesting. Let's press uh, double R or twice. Do something like uh, this I guess I think this is fine okay good we can apply all transforms maybe it won't matter but let's just do it in case um, now what we can do is actually add a uh, where is it a, an array modifier right but it's not going to be a relative offset we will set it to object offset but then you're, go you're going to need to uh, assign the object uh, that will be the center of your array uh, modifier. So for that we will add an empty. Right, it could be a cube. Uh, actually, let's do uh, let's do a plane axis instead. So now you go back to your shoe, and then in object offset, you choose empty. So now when you rotate the empty, you see we created this. Uh, radial array. Since we want to have five shoes in our frame, uh, what we will do is divide to know like by how much we need to rotate the empty. We're gonna need to divide 360 by five. So the rotation of the empty is going to be 360 divided by five, which is 72. Now we can increase the count five. So now it will be a uh, 
Perfect. Um, so we can move the the shoe so it's closer. Yeah, I think this looks fine. Uh, we can move everything to the center. And uh, yeah, I think this is it in terms of uh, the scene setup. So we will add a, we're in top view and then we can add a camera. I press zero here to switch to my camera. And then I will move my camera up. I'll keep this solid for now. I'll move my camera up. We're going to do some kind of, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a macro shot, I would say. So that's why we'll set this to 200 or 180, whatever you like. And then we'll add a plane, which will be our background, our backdrop. Okay, now we will switch to rendered view here. I will obviously turn off my HDRI. We will not be using H an HDRI in this scene. So we will be adding, first of all, let me move my camera to the camera section. Let's name this back ground. The first light we will be adding is a, uh, a rim light, as I explained in uh, previous tutorials. It's just the goal of the, this light is to show the, the the shape of the, the object you're trying to light. So it will be behind the subject, so you'll we'll move it back and then rotate it, X 180. And here, go to top view, we can scale it up a bit. Then we'll increase the power. And usually this, yeah, the spread, you can control the spread, you can see how it uh, changes the highlight on the shoes. I'll just change it until I find something I am satisfied with. Yeah, this looks good, I think. Uh, so our second light is going to be our main light. This one is going to be on top of our scene. Uh, let's name this one main light. Then... Uh, Rim light. So for the main light, um, you probably want something that's a little bit dynamic. So I will not leave it in the center. I can do that, but I think I will move it to the corner here. I will change the spread. All right. Uh, if the power is too much. And then I can just, oh, yeah, sorry. I can just point this here let's change the size maybe let's see I want to do this, yeah, maybe move it up a little bit, yeah. So the goal here is to have some light here, but then I want this spot to be uh, a little darker. Uh, so maybe I can move it even further. Yeah, something like this. So you, as you see here, this spot is, a little, is well lit, and this spot is left a little black on purpose to make the the composition a little more dynamic. I don't, I don't want it to be flat. What's left here, we can also add the Adidas logo, images, tools, color, transparent. And yeah, you can pick this one. Usually when it's from Wikimedia, the quality is really good. So yeah, right click and then save as. So we have two choices here. We can either have, um, we can choose a black or a white background. I tried both and I, I think I chose uh, the black one. 
because it's it looked better. So with the white one, we can yeah. By the way, we can we can also add uh yeah okay Shift D to duplicate and then Z to move it down. R X one eighty. We can yeah you see we can try we can choose to light the background if we want, but it's a it's a personal uh, choice. Yeah, let's leave it this way. And then to add uh, the logo, in my example, I did it in After Effects, but you can you can do it for the animation I did in After Effects, but you can do it in Blender directly if you want. Uh, so the way you do that is by having, you need to have images as planes activate uh, enabled, import images as planes, then Shift A, uh, image, image as planes, and here you will look for your logo. Okay, this is too big. We'll scale it down a little bit. Yeah, it's in the right spot. Okay. We'll zoom in just to center it. Scale. Yeah, I didn't, as you can see the, even if we turn the light off, I think it will be better. But still, yeah, I think I like the black one better. So we'll switch the color of our background to black, right? And then we will go to our logo and then we'll add an invert node so that we change the color. Now it's somewhat uh, white. And to make it pop a little more, we can even uh, turn on the emission. Now it looks better. We can like we can even change the strength so you can see it affects it has this cool effect around the shoe. But yeah, you don't have to. You can just keep it to something low like a two. Yeah, I think it looks good. Actually, I'll move this again. Maybe even more. Yeah, this is better. I don't want them to be touching. As for the backdrop, if we want to be completely black, because you can see the light in the scene is bouncing off uh, our our background. So if we want it to be uh, pitch black, we, you can you just have to turn the specular to zero. So it looks this way, makes the logo stand out a little more. Okay, if now we move on to the animation, it's uh, it is the easier spot actually. Uh, so we'll switch this to timeline. And then for the animation, it's just um, three components. There is the camera movement. So I started by, uh, let's actually start by, uh, yeah, so let's say I want my animation to be uh, 10 seconds. I'll have my frame rate set to 30 and then end is, is gonna be 300. So the first component I moved is the camera. Uh, yeah, so let's let this be the the end frame, and then we can press I and then add a a keyframe location rotation, then go back, then move it along the Z. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know why I pressed lo location rotation. It should it should have been just rotation. And then I rotation. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um. And as for the shoe, so the way we will animate this, yeah. By the way, I c you can also add. Um, I think it's a, it's, it's it will look good if you add depth of field. So the focus object is going to be um, our logo. It's going to be in the center, and then we can turn down the. So if it's zero point one, will be really blurry. But yeah, it's really cool. But it's it's very blurry. I don't think this is good. Maybe set it up a little bit like 0 0.7 yeah this is your choice you you try different values and then you see what you like best as you can see uh, when we move the empty up along the z-axis you can see how the radial array behaves and we can leverage that to our advantage let's say I will start I will leave it here as, as uh, the end frame then I add a let's add location and rotation. Now we will go back to the first frame, and then we will move it up a bit, 
and we will rotate along the z-axis to have a twist in effect so they will be moving it's like a little tornado of shoes and then i uh location and rotation i will not play the animation because it's very slow because the 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 shoe is kind of high poly so it's, it's really slow that's why i will avoid but but the animation is it's going to be very similar to what i i showed you in the beginning and uh, i think this is it yeah one last thing in my animation i displayed the logo in uh, in post but if if you have it in blender and you want to animate the visibility so if you want to see it in your viewport as well you have to do the same but you need to activate this uh the screen we will go to the beginning of our of our frames and then we'll turn it off uh, in both render and viewport right and then we will press i i and then we'll go to let's say frame i don't know two seven seven five and then we'll turn it on i i again so now we have the logo will not be visible in all uh, frame from one to two seven five but after that it will uh, turn on so it will be uh, probably linear i think the interpolation is going to be linear just to make sure you can press t uh sorry not linear constant i mean visibility is always constant you can you cannot set another interpolation mode in uh, visibility as for the mo uh, the movement of the the shoes so this empty here if i can find it yeah this one you can um, click on it select it and then uh, with your cursor on the timeline, press T and set the interpolation to busier. The movement will be smoother this way. Now let's render this out. And then we can do a little bit of composite in. Don't enable glare, I think it will look bad here. There's because the rim light is maybe too. Uh... Oh, actually, this is this looks cool. <laughs> When I tried it before, the glare didn't give a good effect, so I I disabled it. But yeah, you can you can you can try it and see what what you like best. Uh, for the RGB curves, we'll just do the classic S shape. Lens distortion, of course. Uh, unmute this, and then maybe half of this. Yeah, you can see it, it's very subtle. Or, yeah, maybe, actually, I'll leave it as it was. Yeah, this is good. As for the mix, so here this is a mix between the, the denoised image and the noisy image. So let's say you want a little bit of grain. Yeah, this is another way to add grain. By leaving the the noise from the from cycles, you can do that as well if you want. Yeah, I think that's it. One last tip that's geared towards intermediate Blender users. So if you know the basics of Blender and you know how to do a project from start to finish, I think it's a good idea to actually look outside of uh, the Blender community. So you can check out tutorials from Cinema 4D YouTubers, people who are using other render engines like, Cy like Octane, for instance, just to have an idea about uh, like to have di a different view on composition on lighting and maybe even try to recreate it in blender i think it's a good way to practice that's it uh i hope you learned something yeah the main tip here is uh, regarding the the array modifier and uh yeah have a great day